Now, this guy. We have been um, we have been dealing with this this dickhead on the Democratic side of things for the last little bit, and uh, now apparently he is someone else's problem. He is now the Republican Party's problem, and because they have embraced him more than uh, than we have, than any than Democrats have at all, and you could argue that he is now. If he's siphoning votes from anyone, he's siphoning them from Republicans. So it's fairly hilarious. Now, I would like to, and this is, we can all admit we were young once, you know, we uh, we believed whatever little sales pitch came along, anybody that appealed to our ego or lack therein, we were, oh, oh really? You, you like the way I smell? That kind of stuff. I, I get it. I, um, yeah, he used to be on Ring of Fire. But there's some people back in the day that I was like, I like that dude. I like the cut of his jib. I like the fact that he's, you know, lefty and all that kind of stuff and is for the things I'm for. And uh, he must be, he says all the things I like to hear. He must be a good person. <laughs> um, and then you find out years later, they're a paid stooge of foreign interests. And, uh, and you do all the work necessary. And I think I've done fairly well. All the work necessary to not uh, let it destroy your trust and belief in your own ideas and in people who espouse the same things going forward because that's kind of what they're there for. That's what they're there to do, right? So um, that uh, that uh, I'm talking about this guy right here. This is Dennis Kucinich. Dennis Kucinich was the mayor of Cleveland, was a, uh, a Democratic congressional representative from Cleveland, the area around that. Uh, yes, I am CSL. No, this is a small one. I have a bigger one. Uh, for your, yours is a jersey style, and I've still got it. This Can I show you something? This is where to go. Well, I moved that out of the room so it wouldn't get knocked over. Sorry. I'll show you later. <laughs> Today's a scattered show. I'm just going to walk around there. All right. So, um, so uh, Dennis Kucinich was one of those guys that a long time ago, I was like, I, I like that dude. I think he says some of the, the, right, the correct things. Yeah? Politically? So on the right side of history or trying to be, especially around the Iraq war, which quite frankly, it was pretty easy to be. You were either in the, you're with us or against us, yellow cake crowd, which uh, as I recall, was uh, everyone around me was like, that's a bunch of bullshit, but none of us could do anything to stop it because, you know, apparently the, the dim-leaning independents, faux aggressives in that crowd were like, I don't know if I like John Kerry that much. So they stayed home and allowed uh, Bush to have Bush two to have two terms and be number two over and over and over again. And Kucinich uh, largely ran as a spoiler to the left of his, uh, his, you know, his fellow Democrats and in sort of a strategy to undermine their chance of getting elected in a general election for fear of having to fight off. He was like, he's like, think of him as a draft version of Bernie Sanders in some ways, right? Uh, and then it turns out that, um, and I don't know if anybody saw his interview on Fox News with, uh, with Assad, the, pre the, the president of, uh, of, of Syria, uh, where he brought up, he basically gave him a, Dennis Kucinich did the softball interview with Assad to help him uh, deny that the, the Syrian government had attacked their own people with chemical weapons. He was one of the primary people. Did that. He's now running his campaign. He's now a, a campaign chair. Yeah. The guy who intentionally ran to the left of other Democrats to try and drag them into, uh, you know, an extremist point of view so that other voters would make them uncomfortable, would be uncomfortable, maybe going Democratic ways for fear that, oh, these guys are going to have to placate that group. And Therefore, I don't trust them, so I'll just lean back. You know, I won't change horses midstream. Let's keep George W. Bush. Um, yeah. He also got paid $20,000 to give a paid pro-Assad speech and had to return the money. Um, at the same time, interestingly enough, he got $3,000 uh, for towards his campaign from none other than Marianne Williamson. Yeah. Hi, Booger Man. What's happening? Booger. All right. Uh, don't get me kicked off the air like Johnny Fever. 
yeah. So there you go. So just just to catch up. So at the same time, uh, uh, Bashir al Assad was uh, Bashir al Assad was giving um, twenty thousand dollars or through puppet groups to him to pay him to make a speech and then conduct a softball interview on Fox News to help him hide the fact that he killed his own people, 500,000 of his own citizens, including 50,000 children, and then he gassed people and all that kind of stuff. To help him rehab that image, he called in Dennis Kucinich. Fucking sad. And uh, now he's behind this guy. Literally and figuratively. He's literally there. He's literally sitting at the hearing. Okay, so this is from today. This is from um, Robert F. Kennedy spoke on a panel on weaponizing the uh, the government, the, the House Weaponization Committee, that the government has been weaponized against him. Now, we have covered some of this stuff already as far as their theories about this, because this panel has been going on for a while. And um, I have... Let me state right, uh, uh, like right out of the gate, that the Twitter files are a hilarious piece of uh, or Orwellian fanfic that amounted to, uh, I think the phrase is "fuck all," because, and as Dan Goldman points out at one point, he I watched the, the you know a good portion of these today. As Dan Goldman points out, um, if the companies can ever say no then there's no coercion. If you're, you, you either have control or you do not. If they agree with you sometimes, but don't agree with you other times, that's not control. That's not censorship. That's not the US government telling social media and other companies what they can and cannot do. As a matter of fact, the minute they can say no, all bets are off. It is now simply them hearing some advice and some information saying we agree with some of it and we don't agree with other. That's it. Not a crime, not a denial of civil rights, nothing. And only, the only person in the White House to threaten social media companies if they don't take down someone's uh, posts about that, that are direct criticisms of that person in the White House was Donald John Trump. So that said, this is uh, the opening, his opening statement. Let me tell you, uh, Howard Dean, you're you're off the hook. I'm gonna warn you guys. At one point, Lip Spittle makes a, a an appearance and stays there for the rest of the talk. I I have a thing about that. Uh, yeah, it's it's yeah. Oh God, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, and you'll notice also, see how it says nine minutes and five seconds right here? See that? Okay. Uh, he, every, all the witnesses are allowed five minutes to speak. <laughs> Do you think the Republicans are giving more time to people? Never mind. We'll get there. Okay. And uh, I believe it is Debbie Wasserman Schultz who says five minutes on the clock because they had given him 10 or something. Maybe and we could put five minutes on the clock then, not 10. We put five on the clock and we'll start it running. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I want to. I want to. Oh, I don't, and I want to clarify. Some people ask about his voice all the time. He has a his he has vocal paralysis on one of his vocal cords. That's why he talks the way he does. It is not, uh, in my estimation a point of criticism for him. If it was a self-inflicted wound because he was guzzling heroin back in the day and it did it, you, you could argue that it was a, it was a self-inflicted injury. Insofar as I know, it is not. So that's the least of our worries. If his voice bothers you, I apologize. You have a hard time understanding what he's saying. Ask me and I'll try and translate gibberish as best I can. And I don't mean gibberish because of how he's saying something, but because of what he's actually saying. Start. I want to put aside my written statement for, Which is a mistake. for a moment and address one of the uh, points that was brought up, I think an important point by the ranking member, that this body ought to be concerning itself with the uh, with issues that impact directly the American people. The 
rising price of groceries. Seven. Okay. He's running for president, so he's trying to dovetail this into a campaign stop. And he starts with kitchen table issues because as a Kennedy, <laughs> that's, that's something he knows well. I, I'm fairly certain if there's a single person in this room that's never had to buy groceries, like they did because their grandmother said, everybody in the family is going to go buy groceries. Otherwise, people are going to shit on us because we're, we're rich. It's him. 6% over the past two years for basic food stuff of uh, the war in Ukraine, the inflation issues, the border issues, many, many other issues that concern us all as a nation. We can't do that without the First Amendment, without debate. Uh, when I gave my speech, my announcement speech in Boston uh, two months ago, YouTube, I, I talked about all those issues. I focused on grocery. I focused on the fact that working class people can no longer afford to live in this country. Yeah, that that is not the case. I, honest to God, I work. It, things are expensive. Things will continue to get expensive because the nicer things will become more widely available and people but life life sort of catches up to that. I'll get to the details if we need be. But the idea that he's like working class people can't afford to live in this country. This guy thinks that the working poor are quote unquote working class people and anybody in the lower middle class or the middle class or whatever doesn't count. Like the upper 1% is 80% of the populace because that's the only people he ever meets. I talked about inflation, all the issues that deeply concern you and that you've devoted your career to alleviating those issues. Five minutes into my speech, when I was talking about Paul Revere, YouTube deplatformed me. I didn't talk about vaccines in that speech. I didn't talk about anything that be, could be was a verboten subject. I just was talking about my. Also, I, I don't know what the shit he's talking about. Like it, if they took down his live stream someplace for any series of reasons, uh, or if they had an eyeball on him, or he had already had a strike, or somebody else put a strike on his channel, which is, you guys know, we've dealt with this a bunch. People will go in and, and say, this person is threatening harm, blah, 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 instantly to fuck with them. And, uh, and in his case, I, it would absolutely make sense to be a strategy by those around him. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll f call in an airstrike on our own thing and say we're being deplatformed because they don't want to hear his truth. And we'll use that because... It's better than hearing him actually speak. I'm dead serious. This is how they would think. Campaign about it. things, the conversation that we ought to be having with each other as Americans. But I was shut down. And that is why the First Amendment's important. Okay. For the record, if they shut him down because they were concerned about doing anti vax stuff, then they should have done it when he was actually saying anti vax stuff. But there's no fucking way that YouTube censored him because he was talking about Paul Revere or inflation. Good Lord, how many videos have I covered over and over that cover every single topic that he's bringing up as if nobody gives a shit. Debate, congenial, respectful debate is the... Is the oh, but Pfizer and Moderna and... Johnson and Johnson are engaged in a depopulation scheme and uh, Jews and Chinese people are running the whole thing. But, you know, I mean that respectfully in terms of a balanced debate. The fertilizer, it's the water, it's the sunlight for our democracy. We need to... Can't be all three. ...to be talking to each other. Now, there, this is a letter that many of you signed. Many of my fellow Democrats, I've spent my life in this party. I've devoted my life to the values of this party. Yeah, except the whole thing about telling people that, you know, vaccines are going to kill their kids and make their brains stop working and thereby contributing to unnecessary death because you're scaring people away from vaccines that you give to your own children. What the fuck? There's 102 people sign this. This itself is evidence of the problem that this hearing was convened to address. This is an attempt to censor a censorship hearing. 
the, the no this is they have they have issues with one of the witnesses that the other side is bringing forward as representative of the Democratic Party and giving a platform and a microphone to somebody who's running against the current sitting president and is going to use this as a campaign stop and they have and and on top of that he's an anti-vaxer and who by, basically by the way lies about his own family's vaccination and his own most of the time to the people that he talks to about vaccinations for years and years and years. The charges in this, and, and by the way, censorship is antithetical to our party. It was, it was appalling to my- Also, you're not being censored if you're just not given a microphone because you're suggesting stupid shit or you're, or you're actively willing to be a tool of the other party in a politicized hearing. It's not the same fucking thing. Nobody's censoring you. Nobody, this fucker's got- Every possible social media outlet he could possibly want. He can create a newsletter. The government's not going to knock on his fucking door. Nothing. My father, to my uncle, to FDR, to Harry Truman, to jo Thomas Jefferson, as the chairman referred to. It is the basis for democracy. It sets us apart from all of the previous forms of government. We need to be able to talk. And, and the First Amendment was not written for easy speech. Yeah, but it also isn't a protection against foreign interference speech, even if it's like if if people can hear it, whatever, they're, they're welcome to listen to whatever the fuck they want. But if they're going to carry it and they're doing it for money and and they're using social media as the conduit to feed foreign influence campaigns into the American political system and the political discourse, that's not that's not free and open speech. That's manipulation and nobody, uh, like the idea that you would use uh, the, uh, the, you know, I don't know, the uh, freedom of association clause means that because people have the freedom of association, they're allowed to come into your house, open the door whenever they want because they are allowed to freely associate with you even if you don't want to associate with them. That's why you had the fucking door closed. It was written. Yeah, and this is about the weaponization of government and the idea that they censor people on social media. That's what supposedly this is about. For the speech that nobody likes you for. And I was, I was censored not just by the Democratic administration. I was censored by the Trump administration. Which is interesting because the case they bring up that was stayed recently, that, they that the Trump judge filed against Biden to keep them from being able to interact with social media companies that, you know, they kind of, the Republicans were pushing this great 180 pages and it proves that they were manipulated. All happened that like 80% of what they're complaining about happened under Trump and, and ended under Biden. And yet Donald Trump is not mentioned in the suit at all. Does that not seem odd to you? Does that bother anybody else? Just me? Okay. I was the first person censored by the, as the chairman pointed out, by the Biden administration two days after it came into office. And he sent Wait a minute. This is edited. What'd they cut out? Hang on. No. Uh-uh. That's not how this works, kids. No. Whoever's posting the, the, the clips from this, you don't get to cut out the part where he fucks his own argument. Um, hold on one second. Uh, the, let's see. No, let's see. Okay. Weaponization. Maybe a committee thing. Um, I'm going to pick up the lies here to go. Tag me and lock me in a room. Hold, Hold on. You've identified all right. information. Identified. You can't make this stuff up. It's on broad. Okay, hold on one second. They're, they're uh, trying to grab the whole. Yeah, here you go. Freedom of information law after a year of litigation. Mm hmm. I'm going to find the, yeah, here you go. It's the house uh, thing on weaponization. There we go. There you go. Without the First Amendment, without debate, 
uh, when I gave my speech, my announcement yeah, speech, so here we lost, go. and they replied to me to silence me because Jefferson is a chairman of the First Amendment without debate. Uh, when I gave my speech, my announcement speech in Boston uh, two months ago, YouTube, I, I working class people can know issues that deeply concern you and that you've devoted your career to alleviating those issues. Five minutes into my speech, we okay. ought to be happy with each other as Americans. But I was shut down. And that is why the First Amendment's important. Debate, congenial, respectful debate. Okay. I like I I want you to hear all of what he said, and I don't want anybody to think I took any context out of what he says. Is the is the fertilizer, it's the water, it's the sunlight for our democracy. We need to be talking to each other. Now, there, this is a letter and many of yeah, the voted hearing was convened to address. This is an attempt to censor a censorship hearing. The 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 charge is in as, and, and by the way, censorship is antithetical to our party. It was, it was appalling to my father, to my uncle, to FDR, to Harry Truman, to J Thomas Jefferson, as the chairman referred to. It is Were you related to all of them? Now you're just bragging. It's the basis for democracy. It sets us apart from all of the previous forms of government. We need to be able to talk, and, and the First Amendment was not written for easy speech. It was written for the speech that nobody likes you for. And but it was also, I would argue, the First Amendment was written for American citizens. That the standard applies, you know, and the, and the quality of life provided by the Constitution requires that as a citizen, you uh, pledge yourself to the Constitution and are a part of, uh, are a citizen at, specifically of the country for those rules to apply. We've even expanded those rules to apply to people who are just visiting because that's how our country works. But it does not apply to the internet research agency run by Prigozhin and uh, accounts that go, yes, I'm John the America. Fuck out of here. And I, I will say that I was disappointed that during this entire thing, that I saw anyway, somebody might have, but I didn't see anybody bring up the fact that, uh, can you prove that the, the, the accounts that you're talking about, vast majority of them were even American citizens? I know they say they are, but can you prove that they actually are? Or that, the, the, that they weren't even contracting Americans to just f flood stuff in? Because they were in some cases. So this would be a trap for them to walk into. I was, I was censored not just by the Democratic administration, I was censored by the Trump administration. I was the first person censored by the, as the chairman pointed out, by the Biden administration two days. Or were you the last person censored by the Trump administration? I days after it came into office, it ordered a truthful, and by the way, they had to invent a new word called malinformation yeah. to, to, to censor people like me. Hey, there was no misinformation on my Instagram account. By the way, they didn't inter they didn't create that word just for him. Malinformation is very specific. So um, the the example I would give, somebody comes up and says there are broken streetlights between here and your destination where you're driving to, and so uh, some of the red lights and green lights aren't working. That may be materially true, but if the idea is don't trust streetlights. That's malinformation. That's the difference between misinformation, which is that street light is busted or that one isn't when it is vice versa. But when you say that you, I'm trying to get you to not trust traffic lights by saying something that is materially true about one intersection between here and there without saying which, in, which intersection specifically. It is malinformation is, is, an, is specific to trying to use the truth as a lie. Everything I put on that account was cited in source. Yes, this would be called HAL information. It's the good stuff. Peer reviewed publications or government databases. Nobody has ever pointed to a single piece of misinformation that I publish. That's because uh, early studies that are either debunked later or found not to be the case through meta studies where they don't, it doesn't prove itself out. 
that doesn't make that original study misinformation because all of those studies end with single use studies all the time end with there needs to be more information we need to look into this more and then they do a meta study which looks at all of them and says no that's not materially true that does not mean that the scientists who ran the first fucked up study were engaged in misinformation they just either did not have the funding or they were hyper focused or they didn't uh, have any exculpatory information that would make that would make them recognize that it wasn't the case science grows with new information what he wants to do is stop the growing information at a certain point when it engages with what he wants to sell. That's what malinformation is. I was removed for something they called malinformation. Malinformation is information that is true, but is inconvenient to the government. No, it is not inconvenient to the government. It is the truth used as a lie. Uh, and and by the way, it is one of the primary reasons why Mark Twain said there are lies, damn lies, and statistics. Statistics are true in terms of whether you found them out and, and the percentage to which they apply. It's not even like polling specifically. But the idea that somehow your life and your ability to do anything should be curtailed by what happens 20% of the time or 30% of the time and, and directing people based on statistics, that that's what they should be primarily concerned with can be used to malinform people to to not you know I, I would argue it's, it's misinformation but to take the truth of that statistical narrative and apply it more broadly than it actually can happen and I'll give you an example one of the things that they brought up in there in this and Elise Stefanik introduced this thing was this idea that there was a, a poll done that said if 53% of Biden voters hadn't heard about the Hunter Biden laptop story in December of 2020 after the election and that 17% of Democrats would have changed their vote had they known this information. Okay, that you hear that one all the time. I, I, I know you guys have heard that 17% horse shit over and over again. Okay, that study is done with I think like 198 people the majority of whom are Republicans. It's a weighted towards Republican trend. And the the idea was in this narrow casting of people who had voted for, had heard about the Hunter Biden laptop or had not, only about 40% of that group had heard the full story, right? Of that story, it is weighted Republican. So more people hadn't heard about it that were Republican in this slicing study. So it gets smaller and smaller and smaller to where in the, we're around 20 fucking people. And the idea was of the people that said it would have changed their vote, that's that 24% that said it would have changed their vote. Over 50% of those people in this group of 20 that they had sliced down further and further and further into were Republicans. This Trump got 96% of the Republican vote. Does anybody believe that the, the 198 people that they picked, all those folks that were Republican voted for Joe Biden? Right, you get my point, garbage. So they end up talking to eight people <laughs> effectively that were Democrats that said, pe well, people who said they were Democrats, who said they voted for Joe Biden, who said they'd never heard the story about the Hunter Biden laptop, and if they had, it very well may have changed their vote. Okay, so you're talking about less than a dozen people. And Elise Stefanik will take, she offers into the congressional record later on in this hearing. She'll hold up a piece of paper. I want this entered in. This is a poll conducted that says 17% of Americans who voted for Joe Biden would have changed their vote had they heard about the Hunter Biden laptop story. That's what I would call malinformation. That's where you turn 12 individuals hyper sliced down into a poll into 17% of Democrats in the country. Yeah. Horseshit. That they don't want people to hear. And, it, and that's antithetical to the values of our country. 
after I announced my presidency, it became more difficult for people to censor me outright. So now I'm subject to this new form of censorship, which is called targeted propaganda. Oh, I see. So, um, first of all, uh, Barack Obama and his uh, birth certificate would like a fucking word. Cry me a river. Secondly, the targeted propaganda is the methodology of Kennedy's anti-vax stances over years. And you're going to hear him defend himself, I have no doubt, based on that idea. Where people apply pejoratives like anti-vax. I've never been anti-vaccine. I don't know if he just gained more votes than he lost or lost more votes than he's gained. I've never been anti-vaccine. Look at this guy's face right up there behind him, the guy next to Kucinich. He's like... But everybody in this room probably believes that I have been, because that's the prevailing narrative. Anti-Semitism, racism, these are, are the most appalling, disgusting pejoratives, and they're applied to me. Okay, a couple things. We have talked many times about the non-apology apology kids, have we not? We've also talked about our dear friend, our old friend, the, the, the word outrageous. When people are, uh, it is outrageous that people, okay. Saying that these are the most horrifying things you can be called is, uh, listen to him say it again. I, I wanna be real, real clear. Just appalling, disgusting pejoratives, and they're applied to me. Okay. Uh, anti-Semitism, being called an anti-Semite, being called a racist, are the most appalling, disgusting pejoratives to call someone. No, they aren't. The actual pejoratives that anti-Semites use and racists use against other people are the most appalling pejoratives because you are not, my dear sir, being N-worded in public. You, you are not being denied entry to a golf course in 1947 because of it, you wear the wrong hat on the weekend. Uh, all right. The silence me. Because also, does anybody think this would have come up if he hadn't said what he said last week? I, I'm dead serious. This fucker sitting in an Upper East Side restaurant talking about how uh, the the there's it's an, it's the chinese are spending hundreds of millions of dollars on ethnically targeted diseases and it uh, and it's it goes after whites and blacks and it leaves ashkenazi jews and chinese alone and he says this like he's fucking shrugging it off and he's running for president of the united fucking states and he yammers this during a q and a with no sense of the repercussions or what it's saying, which in and of itself would be disqualifying. Even if you didn't believe it, just the laziness with which you would blather this shit in public would be disqu should disqualify you from being president. The, the idea that these assholes want to go after Biden for being gaff prone. Yeah, all right. People don't want me to have that conversation about the war about groceries, about inflation. Nobody, nobody gives a shit about your conversation about the war and groceries and inflation. You are not being singled out because you bring up groceries got expensive. What the living shit. About the war on the middle class in this country that we need to be having. And, and Yes, that, yes. Joe Biden uh, has, uh, he, he won't even bring up the middle class except as his main base of support and that his focus is on growing the middle class from the bottom up and the middle out. It is literally the central talking points of his presidency. Nobody is being censored because they're bringing up the struggles of the middle class over the last three decades. Everybody talks about that. By the way, I want to say this oh dear. while I'm on the record. 
that in my entire life and why I'm under oath. You're under oath because everybody else is under, everybody there, everybody on the panel swore under oath. Are you telling me you came down to this weaponization hearing? You asked to be a, a, a person at the weapon so you could be put under oath in front of the American people and swear to this? By the way, in front of a committee that has no interest in calling you on it if you did fucking lie because you're there lying on their behalf. In my entire life, I have never uttered a phrase that was either racist or anti-Semitic. All right. I got to say, I don't think this is how he thought his campaign would be going a couple of months ago. Also, um, that's a lie. Because in conversation, even repeating what somebody else, this guy said such and such, which was racist or anti-Semitic, everyone in my audience or anywhere else, I don't care who you are, have said things you don't believe and that you're against to convey what was said to another person. The question I would have in those moments is how, how defensive did you get about them at the time? would be, I guess, part of the conversation if it needed to go further because your current behavior struck everybody as fucking weird. I have spent my life fighting my professional career, fighting for Israel, for the protection of Israel. I have a better record on Israel than anybody in this chamber today. Oh my God, he's going straight Trump. Nobody, I am the best thing that ever happened to everybody that's that's what he's, uh, okay first of all uh well second of all i guess um, <laughs> the the republicans on that panel are all gonna you know m probably want to take him out right now because they're all jumping over themselves to say they're the person who's done the most for israel ever um that said also he is losing support right now amongst his tiny little cadre of supporters by saying this Normally, this would be a thing that would grow your uh, your support amongst the general public. In this particular case, he's simply knifing the tires of the people who 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 are who supported him first out of the gate. I'm Hello, the Sarah. only person who has publicly objected to the two billion dollar payout that the Biden administration is now making to Iran, which is a, is a, a genocidal program. I'm the okay. So the Biden administration is engaged in uh, paying for genocide now. Now, remember last week, one of the things that people glossed over in his whole, like the, the disease doesn't affect Ashkenazi Jews and Chinese people, even though Dan Goldman, whose family is Ashkenazi, got COVID um, and brings it up later on. Uh, the idea that, um, you know, one of the things that I think people didn't, quite recognized as shocking and fucked up was that while he was saying that the Chinese are spending hundreds of millions of dollars creating ethnically targeted diseases, so are we. And I'm here to tell you that if anyone on earth is creating ethnically targeted diseases, the United States being in the most ethnically diverse country on the fucking planet with crucial people of all races in every community in this goddamn country, 2,000 different religions, a myriad of different ethnic types, and intermixed so that even if you, like, we're only going to wipe out the Russians. That's what he said. They're, gonna, they're collecting Russian and Chinese DNA. We're only going to do that. Oh, fuck. Everybody's got a little bit because it's America, man. We're, we're mutts. Here's proof. His nose is cold. So the idea that, we, uh, that if anybody is creating a disease that will wipe out anybody but their racially homogenous country, the United States is going to have to spend twice as much defending it because you don't know ahead of time where it's coming from. To protect the American people, the most racially diverse group of people on the fucking planet under a single flag, you would have to guard against a myriad of groups 
who seek to wipe out everybody but their race on the planet. And there's a subgroup in the volume of people out there that the more there are of one particular group, the more the, per the percentage, and here we go again on percentages, uh, is a larger number of actual human beings. And between AI and CRISPR-Cas9, the ability to do a genetically modified a disease, especially if you're only aiming at people that ain't you, grows all the time. It's a constant fucking threat. And so there are white supremacists and black supremacists and German supremacists and fucking Middle Eastern uh, jihadis or whatever who would love to do that to everybody who isn't this particular slice of human. The problem you run into is, again, in this country, we're so interwoven, you don't know how that's going to affect everybody. And you don't know who's going to get there first. So we, so if if China's spending a hundred million dollars, like he says, on a on an on a disease that only kills uh, China, anybody who isn't ethnically Han Chinese, for example, or doesn't have ethnically Han Chinese in their fucking background, if they're spending a hundred million dollars, it's going to cost us a hundred billion dollars to fight it off. Because you got to figure out what they might be trying to do. And if it's coming up and stuff shows up, you got to keep monitoring it all the goddamn time. And then what if these guys try it? What if these guys try it? What if he, that's, but his idea was it's, it, we're just setting up for an ethnically, an ethnic cleansing war that's going to come, which is fucking straight up Manson. The only one who's objected to that. I fought more ferociously for Israel than anybody. He thinks McKennedy doth protest too much. But I am being censored here. Through this target, through, uh, through, through smears, through misinterpretations of what I've said, through lies, through association, which is a tactic that we all thought we had been discredited and dispensed with after the Army McCarthy hearings in the 1950s. Army McCarthy? Also, um, it, this is not an aspect of political voicing. This is not, are you or have you, have you or have you not been a member of the communist party or some shit like that? And sir, have you no decency, blah, blah, blah. All right. That's not what this is. This is, this is specific to private companies not wanting in the case of Facebook, for example, because their group, the people use Facebook skews older and COVID kills older people, not wanting their constituents, their their customers to die off at a faster clip while the midlife Twitter crowd survives. And also Instagram it, it is, is a, is a portion towards children and younger people who might be more vulnerable or might think they're not vulnerable and thereby get it or pass it on to somebody else. And so they might be a little more cautious and careful than say Twitter would be or parlor or gab or telegram or whatever the fuck. But those same weapons, are now being deployed against me to silence me. I know many of the people who wrote this letter. I don't believe there's a single person who signed this letter who believes I'm anti-Semitic. No, I think they signed that letter going, uh, shame on you for asserting this. And I, I, I'm good. Does he think, and this is, I'm, I'm gonna step on something here if I'm not careful. Does he think being anti-Semitic is genetic? You think it's a gene? Do you think, uh, think somebody just wakes up that way? Is it his version of born this way? Does he, does he think anti-Semites, bigots, and racists are that way from childhood? Or, or through increasingly lower standards about the quality of information fed into their own fucking brain, do people eventually come around to an idea that is racist or sexist or anti-Semitic. Because I think wagging that piece of paper in the air and saying, I don't think anybody here believes I'm anti-Semitic. I think in reality, they might not have before, but I think they heard that shit last week and went, whoa, what the living shit is this? I mean, because half the time, um, oh, Karina, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, it's me, the, the little, sometimes it pings on my watch when it does the thing. Make the thing ping. Venmo and Cash App makes my watch ping. I'm just saying. Um, 
<laughs> uh, like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, support the show. I'm, I'm the only person who dives into this stuff all the way through. I'm not taking little chunks of it. I'm not slicing something off so, so, so assholes like this can later on say, they took what I was saying out of context. I'm not. As a matter of fact, when there was a version of this that even looked like it was snipped, I dropped it and went to the whole fucking video. Because that's how we roll at House Parks Mega Worldwide. Thank you very much. I do not believe that. There is no evidence of that. Now I want to say- mm, There's some evidence of that. I mean, that's what the whole idea that it's ethnically targeted and Ashkenazi Jews and Chinese people are somehow uh, don't get affected by COVID and the fact that you bring that up. Like if you were if you were simply just operating on the conspiracy theory that the Chinese created it and it wasn't a lab leak, it was a lab release. It was a full release uh, for those that- I had a beat off. I had a beat off. In his sock draw. That, um, <laughs> that if you were just trying to make the case that the Chinese did this to attack the world, you'd have left the, the Jews out of it, kind of. But by saying it's ethnically targeted, and feeling the need to incorporate the fact that Ashkenazi Jews and Chinese people are somehow immune to it and that it's an attack on white people and black people. It sounds like you scoop the Jews in there for the fucking purpose of blaming them. Yeah, it does. So I would say that is, ahem, some evidence. Is it full evidence? Is it? No. I, I don't know anybody who walks around in public that doesn't have a, a swastika tattoo or, or you know, isn't a part of the Wagner group that uh, automatically would qualify. I think a lot of people, the worst racists probably in terms of their impact, not in terms of who they are as human beings, are the ones who subtly can hide it and operate behind the scenes and pass, <laughs> to use a phrase that I'm sure irritates them. Say something. I think that's, that's more important than it goes directly to what you talked about, ranking member, which is the, the, the need, the, the, this toxic polarization that is destroying our country today. And how do we deal with that? We are more, this kind of division is more dangerous for our country than any time since the American Civil War. Um, no. No, it isn't. It, it's uh, honest to God. This fucker thinks, it, and it's a shame his father isn't alive for him to ask about the civil rights era, which he was largely, I think, high through. And how do we deal with that? How are we going to, every Democrat on this committee believes that we need to end that polarization. Do you think you can do that by censoring people? I'm telling you, you cannot. You, that only That's right. It, it, you, uh, and also, A, none of them are trying to censor anybody. And is it censorship because people, are so, if, if somebody posts a swastika or stands outside of Disneyland carrying a swastika flag and they associate themselves with De Ron DeSantis or Donald Trump and Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis applaud them for doing it without, without going, real quick, why um why do you have a why do you have a giant Nazi? Where'd you get that? Did you make it yourself or because I would just say like I appreciate what you're doing, but I can you do me a favor next time? Can you burn that? Oh no, I we use it every Wednesday. Only aggravates and amplifies yep. the problem. We need to start being kind to each other. Says the guy who believes that everybody works at Pfizer, Moderna. J and J and all these companies are engaged in depopulation schemes. Depopulation. The guy who last week said, "Isn't it weird the Ashkenazi Jews and the Chinese are the people who survive it the most?" And the, which isn't true, but and also for the record, again, not only did Ashkenazi Jews get the disease, they get COVID, whatever, but also. China hides its real death toll. So the idea that it doesn't kill Chinese people is just fucking stupid. China, I'm here to tell you, China has the highest death toll of any country from COVID, P 
period, end of story. When when Xi Jinping dies or the truth comes out or they finally have a situation where, you know, they get a Taiwan-like government and they have a truth and reconciliation thing and they look back over this, there's going to be a minimum of 20 million dead in China from COVID-19. Minimum. And other diseases that have come up over the years in China that they have swept under the rug or hidden because they don't like the embarrassment, they don't like losing face on the uh, international scene, so, that have killed way more than those fucking people. We need to start being respectful to each other. We need Sorry, then those diseases. I, re I overlap myself. Just start restoring the comedy to this chamber and, and, and to the rest of America. But it has to start here. My uncle, Edward Kennedy, has more legislation with his name on it than any senator in the United States history. Why is that? Because he was able to reach across the aisle. Because he didn't deal in insults. Because he didn't try to censor people. Yeah, you're right. Last week, uh, Trump said that apparently Ted Kennedy told him in passing that Joe Biden was the dumbest senator. Remember that? He brought home people who were antithetical to, to what he believed in. He came home almost every weekend with people like Orrin Hatch to our house at the compound in Hyannisport. At that time, Orrin Hatch to me was like Darth Vader because I was an environmentalist. And I was saying, why, why is Teddy bringing this guy home? I would, I would go, why are you still living at a compound as a grown man? But he knew that he was effective because he understood. You guys have a compound, right? Who doesn't? Who, all right. Who in the chat room doesn't have a compound? At least, well, there's got to be a one. Right? One. There's got to be one. Who doesn't? Yeah, there's one person in here who doesn't have a compound. The rest of us all have compounds, right? We have compounds. Stood the comedy and respect and kindness and compassion and empathy for other people is the way that we have the only way to restore the function in this, in this chamber. But more importantly, today we need to give an example in the leadership of our country of being respectful to each other. If you think I said something that's anti-Semitic, let's talk about the details. I'm telling you all the things that- Let's talk about the details. I, you know, people aren't responsible for like brooming up after you when you flippantly assert that that the Chinese are working on ethno bioweapon, ethnic based bioweapons, and they're uh, the Jews might be in on it by association. He's bitching about association, and he literally lumps them in together. You know, there's an argument that uh, yes, there's an argument against it as well. So shut the fuck up unless you have evidence because you are, what you're saying about human beings is fucking horrifying. I'm accused of right now by you. And in this letter are distortions, they're misrepresentations. I, said, I didn't say those things. There's fragments. Yeah, you did. That I said. But I <laughs> There's fragments that I said. Yes, all over the floor, dummy. I denounce anybody. Oops, there's, and by the way, there's our... First major appearance of lip spittle. Uh, fair warning. I will give you warning that MTG did not give when she was showing nude pictures of the president's son just for the shit of it. Who, is, who uses the words that I have said. You can't stop staring at it, can you? Okay, it's, it's rough. To imply something that is negative about people who are Jewish. I never said those things. And I want to point out. You're right. It, it, it's not enough to be Jewish. Sammy Davis Jr.'s fucked. It, you have to be an Ashkenazi Jew. Uh, the way, way to dance around the specifics, asshole. Also, that the chairman pointed to Dennis Kucinich is fighting behind me. There is no two people in, in the country who feel differently about them, more differently about American politics than these two people. <laughs> He means Jim Jordan. And yet they were friends. Dennis attended his children's basketball games, attended his daughter's wedding. This is what we need, how we need. Yes. And Dennis Kucinich was uh, effectively, we learned later, a wolf in sheep's clothing. That's kind of the point.
Dennis Kucinich used to go to ball games and hang around and pal around with Jim Jordan. And he gave a pro-Assad interview on Fox News to help Assad assert that they didn't use chemical weapons and blame it on rebels. And he took $20,000 to speak on their behalf. And he got campaign financing issues because of it. To start treating each other in this country, we have to stop trying to destroy each other. Hey, asshat. Nobody tried to destroy you. You sat in an Upper East Side restaurant during a Q&A with big, with press people and donors at the, when, by the way, when a fight broke out about vaccines and the guy who threw the thing on your behalf started farting so loudly, he, you, he, he, he was farting louder than he was yelling and then he yelled, I am farting. I'm not kidding. That actually happened. And then there was a q and I hope somebody opened a window. I'm just saying. Marginalized, to vilify, to gaslight each other. We have to find that place inside of ourselves of light, of empathy, of compassion. Wait, is, uh, is Marianne uh, under the table with her hand up his ass right now? Um, yeah, you can't. You can't fall back and throw Marianne Williamson in front of you. And above all, we need to elevate the Constitution of the United States, which was written for hard times. And that has to be the premier compass for all of our activities. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to raise, I'd like to raise a point of order. General Lady, a standard point of order. Point of order pursuant to House Rule 11, Clause 2 which Mr. Kennedy is violative of, I move that we move into an executive session because Mr. Kennedy has repeatedly made despicable anti-Semitic and anti-Asian comments as recently as last week. Rule yeah, so she reads through his, uh, his stuff and he, he like, th there's a big back and forth uh, on this. Um, but he got, he was, everybody's supposed to get five minutes, he got nine, just saying for the record. Let me, let me be abundantly clear. Um, Nobody put Robert F. Kennedy in this position except Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Nobody. He didn't, nobody, they didn't go and dig up an old errant comment hot mic thing from a decade and a half ago. He said this last week. And he said it with like this shrugging kind of well as an argument that blah 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 like he's on like he like he wants to like he's on joe rogan that's what it is he thinks the entire fucking political discourse in our country is is shit you would say on rogan in which case he can get fucked because everybody can point out that either he believes it and that's horrible he welcomes that kind of information because he assumes that about his fellow human beings, specifically the Chinese and Jewish ones, which is fucking horrible. Or he's so lazy in his thinking and his, and, and his concept of interaction with regular people that he'll just throw that shit out in conversation at a, yeah, at a dinner table in, an, in a restaurant on the Upper East Side where he's doing a, where the press is gathered on his behalf. Never mind the, when, when, when my uncle Teddy would bring people by the compound and I hated Orrin Hatch because I was an environmental lawyer. You weren't, he wasn't an environmental lawyer. He was, he fought, uh, he, he had a rehab tour as an envir environmental lawyer dealing only with U.S. pollution related stuff. He wasn't like a forerunner on climate or any of that stuff. And then what he, what did he dovetail into? What was the, what was the Julia, uh, Julie Roberts movie? I'm blitzing on the name right now. Um, uh, where... You know, she she played an environmental lawyer uh, that, you know, and then there was, uh, if you'll recall, there was Silkwood as well. The um, the movie about Sh with uh, Cher and 
gosh, what is it? Yeah, Aaron Brockovich, thank you. Um, yeah, the the share movie, um, Silkwood, her and um the the concept being is that there was a whole movement in the United States around that time. Pelican Brief. Well, Pelican Brief is a different one. Um, yeah, Meryl Streep and and Cher were in Silkwood, and then uh the Pelican Brief one was not Aaron Brockovich, but there was a there was a trend in telling those stories, but that happened mid 70s. Remember the the old ads about pollution and and throwing garbage out your window with the crying Italian? Remember all that stuff? Right. Right around that time, uh Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was on a on a rehab tour for the family. And and where did he end up going? He started out talking about stuff that was sort of generally germane. Poison, like people poisoning aquifers and water and that kind of stuff. Pretty standard run-of-the-mill fighting back on chemical companies dumping stuff. There were There's a line down the block of lawyers and people who were fighting that kind of shit at the same time. Um, around a myriad of environmental issues. A lot of them, by the way, after dealing with it in the United States, then again moved on to dealing with them in places like Africa, where I would say, I, I think I told you guys this a while back, but when, remember when the BP guy, when we had the Gulf, uh, the, the, the oil spill in the Gulf, and that guy was, he said, I just want my life back. He didn't quite understand what a big, what, what was the big deal. And the reason he thought that was because his contemporaries at Exxon dumped that same amount of oil that was dumped into the Gulf at that point from the BP spill into the rivers of the Congo every year and had been doing it for over a decade. So he was like, why the fuck is everybody bitching? This is a one-off. So the people who were after him and and secured the, the cleanup and secured the funding and all that kind of stuff, a lot of them after that shit, moved on and, and talk about pollution and, and uh, you know, oil pipeline leakages and other shit like that all over the world. They, they are part of a greater, like, ecosphere. That's not what RFK did. RFK singularly stayed in the country, essentially, and just became an anti-vaxxer. He just went out, he found a preservative in, in, vaccines that was used a while back and 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 believed you know hook line and sinker that that was the cause of autism and the like and he liked the you know he liked the hollywood women that were were uh promoting that at the time who were talking about it look at the crowd who was pushing uh the autism vax related stuff in the early, late 80s early 90s you'll find a fair amount of attractive Hollywood moms. Nobody gets gets points just for showing off their bona fides or joining that, especially when they have a, a financial and family history background that allows them to just kind of pick um, yeah, Jenny McCarthy was one, absolutely. And and RFK Jr. in his uh, in his own books, uh, I would like to remind everybody that he was the early uh, Hunter Biden, like fucking around on his wives. Is his wife uh, apparently committed suicide because she had discovered his his. Uh, journal about the women that he had had sex with and and quite frankly he's he's out there scoop I, I wouldn't doubt scooping up hippie ass doing that's why he's doing posting pictures shirtless and that kind of stuff this is just another tour for that so the idea that somehow like he's coming off like mother Teresa and that the Democrats of all people, are censoring him because they dug up something he said a long time ago. It was last week. Yes, his second wife committed suicide. It's really sad. Um, this was last week. He said this last week. He's 
he's acute he is basically angry with the Jews on that panel and anybody else who doesn't think it's right to say what he said about Chinese people and Ashkenazi Jews, of which, by the way, I, I'm one of those people. I saw the entire conversation that he had and no no tap dance. Like, you know, there's an argument. Fuck off. That's just your way of skating around it in case anybody catches you later. And you can go, well, I do. I mean, there's obviously... Blah, blah, blah. Get out of here. And again, you're running for fucking president. And you're mad because people are calling you on it? He's, he was literally spitting mad about that. So to him, I would say, fuck you. You made your bed. Sleep in it. And don't... I, I, would, I, I think the, the absolute tell, most telling aspect of the whole thing is that his defense of what what he said and what how the last week has gone for his campaign is to hold up a letter that other people wrote that castigated him for what he said and uh, accuse them of censoring him by association and accusing him of being anti-Semitic and being racist. And at no time, other than his like, I defend Israel, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I got news for you. Uh, first of all, there are people who defend Israel because they want all the Jews to move there to one spot so that when Jesus come ba comes back, they can all be killed for not believing he was the Messiah in the first place. So don't, so fuck off with this idea that just because you support Israel, that means you support Jews. You absolutely don't. Secondly, the, the idea that he was like, how dare they call me this and this is the worst and I'm being shut down and I'm being, you know, lied about and this is like a McCarthy hearing instead of going... Let me clarify what I was saying last week and we were in the context with which we were speaking in, because I think this is a very important conversation. You're trying to shut me down and I'm here in front of this. And I want to be abundantly clear that I don't think that uh, there is a cabal of Ashkenazi Jews and Chinese people creating an ethnically targeted disease to kill the rest of the planet. And they're working hand in glove. I do not believe that. Um, I am concerned about bioweapons and therefore I brought up in the greater context of those things and how easy it would be or whatever. But I am not saying that that's what happened. I, this was in a greater conversation about the impact of COVID or how people could manipulate our country or they could create a bioweapon and therefore in a greater conversation about that. Now, the reason you can't say that is because that's not at all what he fucking said. He absolutely was shrugging and winking and nodding at the entire concept. But if he had enough fucking brains to be president, he could bullshit his way out of it. One of the biggest problems I have with these assholes is who doesn't know how to lie right at this point? As a politician, it should be your primary skill, you fuck. Other than that, I have no opinion. I, good lord. What a dick. <laughs> 